The Road to War. Written and narrated by John Miro. Get more at servingworlds.com. 38. Alliance Intercept Convoy Flagship Return. Frankie Olander climbed hand over hand through access tube M14, panting with exertion and with fear. Admiral Daku wasn't answering her calls. Multiple scramblers had put a pillow over her beautiful fleet network, scrambling ship-to-ship -ship communications and jamming up Return's own internal network to a snail's pace. She reached a ledge and sagged onto it, drenched with sweat. Frankie's lungs were for shit, completely devoid of the genetic markers needed for high-altitude adaptation. Even on an Earth ship like Return, with its thicker atmosphere, just climbing halfway to her and Samin's hole in the wall had exhausted her. She was trembling from more than exhaustion, of course. She was no soldier. She wasn't built for running in the dark, scared out of her wits. Too bad for her nerves, she also wasn't built to stand by while people died by the thousands and her beautiful network was strangled. The Reacher Battalion's training and living aboard Cloak. Half the Reachers in the fleet. All snuffed out. She dropped her head against her hand, still wrapped around the ladder, and sobbed. Now Daku wasn't answering her calls, and the Admiral had to know what Willard and Samin had told her before the cloak went up. Where are you, Frankie? Hurry your ass up! The world was always mad, always cruel. She knew. She'd married the wrong man, trusted the wrong government, found herself in the wrong place at the wrong time more than once. She chewed on the scar on her lip, Officer Franzen's gift. It reminded her she made a difference. First with the resistance and then for the alliance. Frankie had shone a light on the misdeeds of pricks in power. Her leaks and intel had allowed the resistance to get people on their side and push back against the darkness. Fleet Admiral Ashland Daku had sought Frankie out and entrusted her to do the same for her. For the entire fleet. Hell, for the entire human race, maybe. Seems like her reward for surviving one rebellion was getting dumped in the middle of another... Uh, mutiny? Conspiracy? The search terms Mentel and Wielder had started her down a new rabbit hole before all those Reachers died and someone strangled Fleetnet. She'd been on the same track for a while. Her special talent, her nose for trouble. Curious about the information blackout about the badly damaged Ryson, she put her network access to use. She'd built the thing after all, and she was the Fleet Admiral's personal special investigator. She quickly found the redacted orders approving and later rescinding a very, very black project. She'd found the original sealed orders seconding Mentel and everything else to Ryson, all signed by a fleet council member, no less. Daku needed that name. Whatever the override project started out as, it wasn't the fleet's doing now. It was a rot, prejudice. A hate spreading inside the fleet. She shifted her weight back onto the ladder and kept climbing, ignoring the pain in her arms and legs. Return was a big ship. Information Division's lab in the belly of the boat was five stories below her. The hole in the wall, really a maintenance airlock she used for the occasional quickie, and where her one-legged investigator friend in special investigations would be meeting her shortly, was still three more stories up. Then it was another five stories up to knock on Fleet Council's door once she and Samin compared notes and were sure about what they were chasing, who they were chasing. She stared up the seemingly infinite ladder, then rested her forehead against a cold steel rung. God, I'm not built for this. Too bad, a voice in her head told her, and she listened. Frankie blinked the sweat out of her eyes and kept climbing. You have been listening to Reach, The Road to War. Written and narrated by John Miro. Music, all this by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Hear more of the story at ServingWorlds.com.
Thank you for listening.